You ready? Yes, sir. This is the What's Next podcast, Houston's number one platform where I invite creatives to share their journeys and give us a depiction of their visions. Most importantly, the last question I'll ask is, what's next? That time again Man I love this fucking intro <laughs> I love this shit man It's that time again Yeah Walk with us Yo I feel like 95 Sachi on my body Biggie chick a puppy yeah. That ballin' is a hobby And I'm wildin' in my wallies No valleys, no Pilates Yeah Houston, Texas Houston, Texas Welcome back to episode 113 of the What's Next podcast, a production of Still Visionary Inc. Um, Man. <laughs> episode 113. Man. Um, you know, first episode of May. Uh, I have to apologize for my inconsistency because um, it's just been a tough couple of months transitioning. <laughs> And uh, I find myself here. There's no other person that I wanted to podcast with more <laughs> than my yeah than my dog, my brother, man, fam. So before we get started with the episode, let's introduce our social media handles. For sure, for sure. So we don't disrupt the flow of the conversation when we get to that point. Indeed. Um, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Christopher J, aka CJ Hunter, one half of the Bill Podcast. Um, my social media handles on Facebook is just Chris Hunter. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, CJ dot the exec, um, at underscore the build eight, the build on, um, on Facebook. And what's up, builders, on YouTube? Okay. See, yep, yep, yep. Okay. And uh, my name John is... John Ross Dyke, the first, founder of Still Visionary <laughs> Inc. And creator of the What's Next podcast, dropping every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you would, connect with me on LinkedIn, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my yes, fan sir. page on Facebook, and visit my website at stillvisionary.com. Uh, a little different setup today. You can also follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, John Ross Dyke and Still underscore Visionary, and the What's Next pod underscore. It's a different setup today. I want to try something different. So, um, live. Don't have my main camera. Got to get it fixed, but you know, we got alternatives. Yeah. No, but, um, still live, bro. Yeah. Still live. Fam, I, I just, uh, it's just time to level up. For sure. To, um, you know, try something new, mm -hmm. get a different look, a different feel. And I wanted to, I wanted you to be the first one on the podcast so we could do it together. For sure. I appreciate that, bro. Like, uh, you know, uh, our our family connection goes back yeah, a long way. No doubt. Uh, so, you know, this is this is nothing. Right. Like, this, this ain't nothing like, um, you know, I see things that, you know, you do on your platform that, you know, myself and Cobb try to incorporate right. with the build. Um, you know, what I'm saying everything from product placement to like, uh, I've been searching, bro. <laughs> Ever since you, uh, you, you, you got your student to do the drop, right? Mm. I've been like for about, before the end for mm. about eighteen months. I've been looking for somebody to do a drop for Cobb as mm. for his DJ end. Right. But then I seen you do this for for what's next, and I was like, dog. We slipping in our pimping, bro. Like <laughs> we slipping in our pimping, and so I'm. I want a young lady with a British accent mm. to do ours. So you want her? You want it to be authentic, or she could just put it on? Um, I want it to be authentic. Yeah, I've reached out to maybe two or three sisters that I follow right uh, on Instagram from the UK. Right. Um. Uh. Two of them. We're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm super nervous about doing that, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then and then the third one was just like, yeah, I want five grand for it, and I was like, <laughs> five five thousand American dollars, <laughs> 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 like, 
oh, okay. Appreciate you, my girl, but yeah. nah, we good. So yeah. nah, but you know, man, we we admire you from afar, bro. I appreciate it. Real talk, like, you know, um ever since you were doing the um Man, what was the name of my the series? Grussell Diaries. Uh, Grussell Diaries. Grussell Diaries. Grussell Diaries. <laughs> Grussell Diaries. <laughs> like, nigga, nigga, like, hey, if y'all don't know about Grussell Diaries, y'all are not really fucking with my nigga for sure. I appreciate it. Like, y'all not. Like, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, bro. But I appreciate the opportunity, man. No for doubt. sure. I want to take the moment to uh, acknowledge two important people. One that you introduced me to. Um, I want to first and for first and foremost, I want to say rest in peace to my line brother, my CT, yeah. Baron James Hornberry, Hornsberry, um, thirty second yeah. degree. I want to say rest in peace to him. Rest in peace, man. But I want to say most importantly, I want to save the most important one to last. But I want to say rest in peace to brother Mike Fain, man. Who, um, yeah. without him, I wouldn't be here today. Sure. In this position, sitting next to you, one, but just. I wouldn't be in this in this position. I wouldn't I wouldn't be part of KOI. Man. I wouldn't have met anybody without Brother Mike Fane. So I wanna say rest in power to him. For sure. And I wanna say rest in peace to Miss Penny. Man. Yeah. I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Miss her. Yeah. And she would <laughs> y'all. Y'all don't understand, fam. If my mother was still alive today. God bless. God bless. And she knew, like, even she she could live 20, 30 minutes from me. If I tell her, hey, my uh, JR is coming to my house yeah. and we're going to record a podcast, yeah. um, I would not be able to live it down if right. I did not go get her, right. then go to HEB right. and make... Right. Your your Kool Aid and <laughs> and the turkey fixings and all of that stuff like y'all like y'all don't understand, fam. <laughs> we go back like <laughs> she wasn't like she was doing that for me, of course. You know what I'm saying? I'm her kid, right? Like, right. but when when BJ and yeah. Jr. And, and Turtle, God bless. You know what I'm saying? God were please. coming through their process. They yeah. would be at the apartment, man. Yeah. You know, I was taking care of my mother at that time. And no matter when they came, how late or how early, when she knew that they were coming, she was making them a full meal. Mm. And JR would get the Kool-Aid with the yeah. fruit in it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Man, these these family ties run deep, man. No doubt, no doubt for sure. Like, um, um, how you feel, man? If you could define yourself in one word, what would that word be? How you feel? Oh man, one word. Pressed. Right. Pressed. Uh, the reason why I would say pressed, um, and, you know, anybody that has been on on our platform to build in any way shape or form y'all know i'm gonna keep it a being with you i'm not gonna fake the funk i say pressed because um out in every area of my life i want more i want more um in terms of my health i want more i want to not be on chemo. I want to not be taking all these pills. Like I just, I just want more. And that starts with, you know, amping up everything that I'm already doing in terms of my career. Right. I want more. Right. Because I can do more. And because I know that there are other stories that, you know, saying black creatives are, uh, are, aren't picking up on that that I find unique. Like, you know, um, in terms of my relationship, I want more, more love, more growth, right? Like, I'm just pressed to deliver and be and do more. Right. Right. I would say for me, it's um, passionate. Gotcha. Hmm. I think that uh, when um, passion meets adversity you got to find a way to be keep remain passionate mm. 
Um, that's a that's a word that Fred kind of gave me when when we sat together. He said that anything that I touch, the passion exudes from it. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know that's that's all you you ever been, yeah. bro. Like I ain't never known you to not be that. Right. That's kind of I don't know the primary energy that I've always known you to be on. Right. Right. And, you know, I think it just, it transfers from thing to thing. Mm -hmm. And so when I was um, in the middle of podcasting, I mean, you know, I did it since 2019 and 2020. I really kind of was like, all right, I'm going to do this every day. Yeah. And, you know, it yeah, some, we could see that. It, it brought some, you know, <laughs> it brought some, some stress to my relationship, to my teaching career, everything, because my mind was focused on just every Tuesday I had to drop, every Tuesday, every Tuesday I have to drop. And then... Uh, this year just got to a point where my attention was being pulled more to work. Yeah. And um, I had to be more dedicated, put more time into it to be able to give to the girls more, even though I didn't feel like certain times I always knew what I was doing. Right. But they required um, the grass to be cut. Yeah. To at least be present at practice so that they could do whatever they could do at practice. Right. And so... um. I've been struggling for the past couple of months to to find consistency again, but the passion brings me back. Yeah, all the time. I mean, man, you're you, along with several other people, are who I use as a measuring stick uh, for consistency. Um, you know, I've we've had a couple of heart to hearts, uh, Cobb and I when it came down to, you know, doing things the right way. Right. Um, you know, you, you started podcasting in 2019. Yeah. You look at a little, a little, a little earlier, maybe 16, 17, 16, 17 right? right. So, so, you know, you, you start like dropping every Tuesday and it was one of those situations where you can associate Tuesday nights or what's next nights. Right. Right. When somebody is able to just automatically know, like, all right, I'm going to get a notification from YouTube. JR's podcast is, is right. I'm going to, I'm like, I'm going to get that every Tuesday. Right. Period. Like right. even when my lady is going live on YouTube and Facebook, cause her nights are Tuesdays. I'll get, uh, your notification first. Mm hmm. Cause yours drops at what six o'clock? Six p.m. Central Standard Time. And then she John Ross Dyke Sorry, first, I'm founder of Still the Dream, and creator of the What's Next podcast, dropping every Tuesday at six p.m. Central Standard Time. Right. So then I'm gonna get that notification at six, and then at eight o'clock, after I've set up her camera and did her lighting and everything like that, like clockwork, eight o'clock, like. That's branding, fam, like that. But that comes from consistency. Right. And, you know, with you, um, folks like um, 85 South Show, mm -hmm. um, um, Here's the Thing, mm -hmm. with, with Kev and Angel, um, we know, you know, and it's just like, it don't matter how many views it get or, or, or whatever the case is, I know for a fact that I'm going to see my brother's face pop up and it's right. like if he can do that with everything that he has going on he's got a wife you know what i'm saying all of this other stuff like we you know what I'm saying we do this you know all day every day there's no reason for us to not be right. constantly you know what i'm saying so you know i you may be saying oh man i haven't been consistent and this and then the third but it's just like nigga you've been dropping every like this is 113 yeah yeah. You know, I, I think it's in, it's um, that right there, the nuggets that you've just given me, the accolades that you've given me also, when you don't hear it a lot. Yeah. It kind of pulls because yeah. I, too, am a fan of you and Cobbs mm -hmm. to the point where I would. Um, the podcast, I would listen to it either. Y'all don't you're not on SoundCloud, are y'all? Uh, no, nah. you're on the Apple podcast. Don't Apple know that podcast. For a fact. Yeah. And Spotify, and Google. And I loved I love the way that you and him broke down the whole Nipsey thing. Oh, yeah. I love that. 
Um, and I wanted to come in here and talk about the episode where you said that Mike Fain saved your life. Mm -hmm. Right. And we'll get to that in a second in a, when we transition to that point. But, you know, when I listen to y'all podcast, I hear I hear what I am trying to do, period. And that is be able to find a topic and have sufficient information about it to be able to bounce it off of somebody. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> and so and, and when I hear that. And when I hear that, I'm just like, okay, I that I can't do. See, for me, everything is like I'm 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 interested about the journey, the mm. process mm -hmm. in which it takes, because that right there, that doesn't change from creative to creative. Right. The the I guess the vehicle changes in right. terms of not the path, but how what you're using, but the fact of being uncertain, the mm. fact of starting. Yeah, 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 the fact of having to go through real life stuff, yeah, sure. you know what I'm saying. All of that kind of like goes into it, and that is the essence of my podcast. I like to sit here and I like to get the journey from people to see where we're like at. Indeed, I think that a lot of times when we when I converse on a podcast, I think that people fail to see that. Listen, I could care less about who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that to sound rough. Well, fuck it. I don't care who you are as a person. Right. Right. Because when we get done with the podcast and and we watch it together in our various um, locations, we then build a relationship after. Right. So this is but for, for now, the podcast and this is what I try to tell people when I'm setting up. I'm like, listen, this is the time to kind of like let's let's brainstorm and pick our, our pick from each other. Give and take. So it's it's not a it's not an interview. It's a conversation amongst like minded right. people. For sure, you know what I'm saying. And I, sure. and I like to I like to have people say, you know what? Why did you do that? Because it's important. Yeah, it's important to be able to take from people's journeys yeah. and add to your own. Subtract what might not work. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And so, that's true wisdom, right there. You know, and uh, I mean, episode one thirteen. Yeah, man, one thirteen. But my brother. Yeah, yeah, man. The, uh, I'm just thinking about what what that represents. You know what I'm saying? I've th I've tried to do that too. The man, the, 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 the the esoteric meaning of it all. You know what I'm saying? The the you know the it equaling up to five. You know that freedom. Um, you know what I'm saying five in essence really is a is a number of creatives. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. it is a number of creatives. It's it's a uh, it's a, it, it it it's focus, yet, um, chaos. It's like it's controlled chaos in a sense, and I think that, um, you know, then you and then you got the number thirteen, um, you know, just the the symbolism of 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 that. Um, I'm thinking about my lodge right now. You know, saying Sons of right. Moses number thirteen, um, you know the the way that that number has been steered away from but in 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 all actuality it's 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 it comes together you know you got you got four coming from 13 and and we know from a masonic standpoint you know the significance of of that number in and of itself and so um man i'm just i'm i'm grateful as I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm listening and, and especially when you said episode 113, I'm like, ha, oh shit. Okay. All right. That's, that's what's up. So, you know, um, but I like that. I, I like, I like that. Uh, cause that's a different, like what you said about, I don't care who you are as a person. I want to get down to the to the the meat and potatoes of why you do what you do, how right. you did it. And you know, that, I don't want I don't want to sound like for me. I I said, you know what? I already have an aggressive tone um, when people talk. Yeah, I've, I've, I've I, when I talk to people, I've had to find and I've had to say to myself, "Listen, you're kind of aggressive, but you know, it's." You don't have enough time to know all these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Look, man, and that's the thing. Like, so, you know, I've seen you do interviews with a lot of people that, like, you know, that you know. Right. Right. And I imagine in the future you're going to do interviews with 
a lot of people that you don't really know right. personally. Right. And where that comes down to, in my opinion, is a person being able to separate the person from who they are as an artist, a right. creative, a business person, et cetera. Right. Which is what I I don't have the ability to do. Right. I don't I don't separate it. Right. Right. Because who you are as a person is is what gives you the inspiration or the need to express yourself as an artist right. or as a creative or a business person, et cetera. Like right. those things to me, they bleed into one another. Right. So it's interesting to be able to to sit down and 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 get game from a person that has the ability to separate that and and then get shit done. Right. As opposed to myself, like if if I don't fuck with you as a person, you're not coming on my podcast. Right. That in in essence can mess up opportunity. I think what taught me to do that is that um, being an educator. Ah, yeah, yeah. Being an educator, um, and it's it's a it's tangent, but there was a coach at Waltrip High School that used to say that there's no separation between athletics and academics. And when I sat with that, I thought, what does he mean by that? What he really meant with it by it was that if you can make it in the classroom, then the sport is not that, you know, it's not that difficult. Hmm. But then I realized that the classroom is one, it's two different entities. Mm -hmm. One begets the other. Like you can't play without having the grades. For sure. But the kids and themselves outside of the classroom are different. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. and, and 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 I say that because the class of twenty twenty one I coached for three years. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And and the reason why I can separate the two is because the class of twenty twenty one in softball, I was with I was with one of my players for four years. Mm -hmm. I never taught her. Right, right. But I, I, I come to find and understand her character. Dedication Through is a big part of Yeah, ah. it's a big part of it. So for me, I can sit and get that from somebody and not know. I never taught her, never seen her perform in the classroom, mm -hmm. but I knew her through athletics. Right, right. And so for me, when I come to the podcast, you know, if you have a... Right now, we're in the age of million-dollar ideas. If you... Pardon me, if you got a million dollar idea, we really need to sit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel I'm that. I'm to get my dollars up. I feel so we that. really, really need to sit and just converse. Yeah, yeah. I you know feel that. Yeah. What do you yeah. think that people should take from our conversation today? Um, so far, um, uh, three things. Uh, number one, Collaboration mm. is the, mm. the the key to um to all things. Um, for those of you who will hear my voice and know what I mean, um, your lily work, your networking, your pomegranate is important. It's gonna be a lot of light this episode, y'all. You know what I'm saying, like your lily work, network, pomegranate is is you know what I'm saying you're nothing without your network. Period. Um, number two, um, you gain, you, you know, the wisdom to contrive, right? The strength to protect and the beauty to, to adorn. Correct. A lot of light. So then the, the wisdom comes in at being able to see two, two people that approach the same lane differently and have success that that can be defined objectively by other people right right you can take the the two ways that we approach podcasting right and an individual will be like oh well shit i want what's next and i want to build podcast on my network right because this brother brings in people and, and gets into, into the mindset of who they are as an artist or creative, why they do what they do. And then these two is just some shit talking ass dudes that work through shit as black men. And, you know, 
they they pontificate on on social things and you know philosophical things or you know um you know and we need both and then the third thing is um giving yourself grace and if you can't give yourself grace um finding it uh uh you know, finding a way to give grace to others in that, you know, you talked about how our oh, man, you know, I ain't really been. Well, the reason why I said what I said is not only because it's true, it's just because I'm noticing that my brother isn't giving himself grace. And, you know, <laughs> if I see it or give it, he or if I see it or hear it, I will fly to the relief of he. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not saying that you was in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you weren't. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you do this thing when you um, get ready to say something profound. I noticed it, and so so I remember. God bless the dead. When when I went to the shrine of the Black Madonna for Doctor Mike Fain, Edric said to me, "Yo, you need to get up there and say something about how um, what Doctor Mike Fain did for your life." And I was already running late, mm. and so I think about that moment. And then I think about the last time I saw Mike Fane walk on Waltrip campus. And I was saying, brother Mike. And it almost, it hurt my heart that bro, he didn't, he, it, it looked like he didn't recognize me or remember me. But, but you do this thing where you kind of look down, you pace, getting ready to say something like you getting ready to pour your heart out. You did it. The first time I saw you did, do it, you did it at your mother's funeral. You were the last one to speak. Yeah. And I think you said something like, I'm going to let everybody get it out because what she meant to me. Yeah. And I remember thinking to myself, yo, this kid, man, this guy has got away with words. You come back and we're in the shrine of the black Madonna and you're doing it again. I'm like, man. And I'm thinking, man, I want to get up there and just say, Mike, I love you. Thank you for just rescuing me and saving my life. When you got up to say what you said, I said, it's over. I ain't going to be able to. Nah, it's, like, <laughs> it's a done deal. Ever since then, I was just like, nah, this kid can go. This guy can go. Yeah. This guy can go. And that 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 was cultivated uh, by Mike Fain. Right. Um, Take me back there. You said you said on the on the build, you said that Mike Fain saved your life. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, you know, my my uh my journey in speech debate and theater started in the sixth grade, um, at Lanier Middle School in HISD. And um Products know, were products, y'all. Yeah, for sure. Uh <laughs> and you know, I originally we went to a, a tournament at Scarborough hosted by Mike. Now, mind you, bro, we hadn't heard it. We had never heard anything about Scarborough High School at that point, bro. Like, (laughs) it was to a point where, like, the whole team was like, Scarborough? Like, what the hell is, like, and so we had pillows and blankets thinking that we were taking an out-of-town trip because no one knew where the hell we were going. And we literally got on 16 and drove (laughs) to the north side. (laughs) And the first time I ever saw Mike Fain, he was talking to my then coach. And that coach passed away last month. God bless. Literally a month ago, a month and a day ago. God bless the dead. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I'm hearing him, I'm seeing him interact with, with Mr. Henley and, um, you know, I'm thinking, oh man, another short white guy teaching speech and debate, go figure, right? Mm -hmm. Like y'all are written with short white guys. And then a a couple of months later, um, we get, uh, we, we have a meeting 
And they was like, yeah, this guy, Mike Fain, wants to take you guys to middle school nationals. And I met Mike. And upon meeting him, you know, he he had already had a conversation with Mr. Henley about who I was and what I do and this and then the third. Was that because Mr. Henley thought that you were the best in that group? Or? Nah. Nah. W- what actually happened and and you know, it really put a wedge between myself and Mr. Henley. Um, and is that he didn't think that myself or the students that he ended up having going were worthy of that opportunity. And Mike looked at me and didn't see a jock. Cause at that point, man, I had been illegally recruited to play football and run track by at least six HISD schools, Lufkin, Katie, like it was, it was, but Mike was like, well, I, I asked around about you. Uh, you're in the band, right? Yes. And you do speech and debate. Yes. Um, tried your hand at theater as well. Yes. And you do, you do all of these things. Yeah. Oh, well, this public speaking stuff. Yeah, you that's cool, you know, but I want to see what you can do in poetry and dramatic and things. I'm like, man, uh, I don't sound, mm-hmm. but, you know, I'm, I'm a debater. Cause like, I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I do, I do speeches. I write my speeches. Like that's what men do. And he was like, but why can't you act? What's, what's so bad about poetry? Like you're more than what Mr. Henley has told you that you have the ability to do. Mm. And I'll never forget, man. They took us to nationals. Mike, um, Mike bought me my very first, um, sports coat to debate in. Um, Mike bought me my, uh, first pair of uh, dress shoes, you know what I'm saying? For, for a debate, you know, growing up in a Christian household, you know, you got your suits and this, that, but that's Easter stuff. That's church stuff. I I was never properly attired when it came down to participating, which is probably one of the reasons why Mr. Henley didn't, mm. you know what I'm saying? Um, but Mike bought me those things and Mike, um, sat with my mother Almost like a like a like a fucking football coach, bro. Mm-hmm. Like he sat with my mother on the couch, like having a conversation with her. Um, you fast forward, we do very well at that national championship, and and Mike is in the wing, standing just like like how you doing like this. And I walk over to him, and I'm I'm like, man, thank you. He, I told you so, and he walked away. Like I told you so. As if to be like, like mad at me that I didn't believe in myself. Um, I had a stroke later on that summer. And um, the doctors came in and in front of all of the football coaches from Lamar High School that were there and my family, they said, Christopher, you'll never play football again. Such and such has been destroyed in this part of your brain. You can't. You can't handle that contact. And I got a phone call from Mike two days later trying to convince me to go to Scarborough and compete for him. And he said these words to me. He said, listen, you're a renaissance man. You make great grades. You play two musical instruments. And you are an amazing public speaker. You can either wallow in your sorrows and your pain of, of not being able to run a ball for the rest of your life, or you can really tap into the greatness that you are beyond the gridiron. And that was that. Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, 
but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. You do what you do for yourself to prove you can do it for others. Even though the year of perfect vision needed corrective lenses, your vision was never out of focus. You remained still. You remained determined. Kobe said, The Mamba mentality is the attention to detail and the level of commitment. Run your race because you got time. Keep the momentum. Believe in your story, a creative story. Remember, never stay comfortable while trusting the process. Be innovative in your 720 hours. There will be stumbling blocks. You just keep pushing. Most importantly, what's next? Continue to drop. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday? Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. One time for Dr. Mike Finn. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, I just, uh, I hate the way that uh, we all parted ways. Yeah. Because hmm. he was a backbone. Man. You know. Was he? <laughs> you know, um, TJ pulled out his paddle the other day. And I, I, the first thing I thought I was like, "You still got that, bro?" On my soul, I don't mean to, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm, I'm on my way earlier today, right, to go grab some toilet paper and paper towels from the Family Dollar at the front of the neighborhood, and I'm pulling out that, and I was like, "Man, let me grab a gallon of water." And in the back of my truck mm. is my paddle in mint condition. Yeah. No bumps, no bruises, yeah. like a little bit of fading because I lit like he literally made those in 2007. Like he started right. making those right. in 2007 right. when we were raised. Right. Like, and like it took everything in me to just kind of not get, yeah. not get sad. Yeah. Cause I remember when I seen the pad, I was like, "Man, God, like, man, we miss a brother like Mike Fang." Man, what? Man, every day. Like glue, and that's why you know you spoke on Turtle earlier. You know, I, for me, I remember when BJ passed. I remember how Dre came in the lodge and said, "Such, such, such, such." He was looking me in my eye. He said, "Such, such, such, such." BJ was was murdered. And I knew how applicable that was to me because yeah. of, you know, the history. BJ, listen, this guy right here was a guy that taught me everything that I know in the craft. Give and take some here and there years later, yada, yada, yada. And I remember calling Turtle. I remember saying, because we were um, doing a Lodge of Sorrow. Yeah. And we were, uh, um, I never seen so many grown men crying. <laughs> But I could not, I could not get my, I could not get, I couldn't understand why, because I remember saying that, you know, I felt the closest to Turtle because he was younger. Right. And I had more of a duty towards him, like, mm -hmm. you have a ride. I gave him a shirt off my back, you right. know. I bought everything for him. Dr. Mike Fan paid for his, his process. Right, right. So I called Turtle, I was like, man, you know, I've already lost one. I, this is the first, you know type of major death that I've had to deal with. Right, right. I called Turtle. I'm like, yo, Turtle, you know, BJ passed because here's the thing. The aggressive part of me came out when I see the, the, the post on Facebook, all oh, my CT, all oh, my CT. Listen, your brothers are going to help put this, give this man his last right because that's what his father wanted for him. So you either going to ante up and come on with us Oh, you need to stop saying my brother, my brother, because that man ain't your brother. Huh. If you can't, if you can't sacrifice time to come out here, because it was a reunion yeah. for everybody. Everybody was there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, I yeah. looked at that paddle and I said, man, we we lost a lot. Yeah. Oh, man. Look, bro. Um, UMW having its its um you know 
historical landmark designation doesn't happen without Mike Fane. It doesn't. Miss Moody and and getting that building that we used to meet at at Dowling and McGowan, that that stand that's out there that has it as a historical landmark, he was the one that was aggressively like these are the, because because Mike was talking of gentrification back in 2007. Mm-hmm. Mike was talking about the the reverse of white flight back in 2009. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 he made it a point to like hey, if y'all don't and as white as snow as Mike was, Mike as snow. Mike used to be like if y'all don't protect it these white folks will come and snatch it from you. Had a lot of soul, man. He and and people used to be taken aback like does hey hey Chris uh mm-hmm. do Mike know he white mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah yeah you yeah, know and yeah. it's just like hey man like y'all don't it's 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 different it's it's he's a little different y'all right. you know what I'm saying and you know in terms of BJ man I, I live with a lot of regret um because um BJ and I weren't weren't on talking terms when he passed yeah. And when I found out at like on the last day of grand session that year, um, myself and, and brother rock went back to, to our hotel. We were changing to go back to the shrine ball and, uh, and brother chance, uh, hit me up and, I lost my shit, yo. Like I, I'm like, nah, mm-hmm. bro. I'm, I'm, I'm not going. Right. Like y'all got it, bro. I like I'm, it. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good, you know. And and I immediately wanted to, you know, get to South Acres. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like what's, mm-hmm. <laughs> what's the move? Mm-hmm. Um, and and, you know. BJ and and Mr. Henley are, are two people in my life that um you know f- we weren't on speaking terms and I made the mistake of allowing life to trick me into thinking that I had time. Right. Right. We do that. You know, we allow life to trick us into oh man, you know what I'm saying? One day we'll be one day and you know he's he he gone and and I think about BJ a lot I think about that a lot you know um which is why every anybody from a masonic standpoint especially like anybody that I had any sort of attachment to in my masonic journey hey bro I don't hold no nothing towards nobody. If 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 somebody reaches out to me, um, I'm I've been answering. Like, hey, it is what it is because you know Mike Fain helped to save my life in terms of those those very important formative years. But Masonry saved my life in terms of my adulthood because at that time when I came in at nineteen, you know, hey man. I had mom to take care of. I was going to school full time. Right. I remember. You know what I'm saying? And like the that that street element, that that dope selling, you know what I'm saying, influence was there. It was there. And I tell people all the time, like, bro, like Masonry took a nineteen year old scared little boy and showed him how to be a man quickly. Right. Like quickly, right? And you know, I will like those that time in my life, man. Will is is responsible for me being alive, bro, on my soul. I say, like, I say. oh man, you know, like I don't give a fuck about nothing that go on. I will always love Andre Jones, right? Always. Right. Um, because 
you know, him, Drew, right, Travis, right, brother Corey, right. Brent, right. all those got like, man, Jeremy Sasser, Jeremy Sasser, uh, Victor Roberts, Kyle right. Knight, right, man, like, we going deep, y'all. Like they didn't have to, Sheldon. They didn't. They didn't have to look at me and say this brother is worthy of coming into this fold. Right. They didn't have to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you know how voting goes. Mm -hmm. You know how battling goes. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I was there. And so it's just. No, like, I wasn't there, but I, I I was there later. You know what I'm saying? It's just like. And you also know the process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know. Um, I'm just, all of those things help to really cultivate, you know, everything people see now on, on, on our platform. Um, even, even how I structure business. Right. Like I remember Mike, um, what we were doing with the, with speech and debate, the summer camps. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> when I when I laid out like how I wanted to structure it, and he was just like <laughs> joking, like oh, this is a heavy Masonic influence, isn't it? Right. And I was like, yeah, but they don't know that. <laughs> 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 they don't know that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, man. What songs on your mind? <sighs> oh. I'm gonna keep it a buck, bro. Go ahead. I've been listening to a lot of Alex Isley lately. Okay. On the last episode, you spoke about her, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you spoke about I, her. I fuck with Alex yeah. Isley a lot. Right. Um, Good and Plenty remix, I listen to a lot. Right. With uh, one of my boys, my boy named Lucky Day. Mm -hmm. Like I've been listening to her a lot. Yeah, this, I like I like that song quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I uh, of course Nas, you know, for sure. Sorry, not sorry with Jay DJ Khaled, <laughs> Beyonce, James, Final Word. Man, he ate Final Roy. Um, Nas and the new Cole dropped. Um, I I peeped Nicki's album today. I, I was listening to uh. Conway, Benny the Butcher. Oh, you you like the, the, that Griselda camp? I, I do like too, them. bro. I, do. I like them. I do too. I like them. Um, tell me what you think about this record. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> it was it was. Look, man. Look, y'all. The reason why I asked you that is, man. I remember the first time we really sat and talked about hip hop, man. I remember how you surmised "Ready to Die." <laughs> I yeah. remember how you said. It was a story of the man from boy to man with the beginning all the way to suicidal thoughts. For sure. And I was like, wow, oh, man, you know, you're you, when you when you wrap something around in your mind and you articulate it, it always comes out like a million dollars. <laughs> Appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Listen, the way you broke down the whole Nipsey thing, I was like, "Woo! these boys spitting heat rocks. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know. I just when it comes to when it comes to music, um, I really one of the reasons why I, I guess I don't necessarily. It takes me so long to get into different folks. Mm -hmm. Number one, I'm a creature of habit to begin with. Like I'm very, you know, what I'm saying like. If you look at my, my 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 stuff, like if you look at my Spotify, um, on repeat is the songs that that I'm gonna li I'm listening to every single day, right. just because it just right. I I need those things to get me into a different mindset. But secondly, um, I always like to connect to things and and people and music that speaks my life. And articulates my thoughts in a way that, like, creatively, I couldn't do to a beat or 
oratorically, I couldn't capture without being offensive. Right. That's why, you know, somebody like Cole, um, you know, when I listen to this new project, I'm like, all right, cool, great. <laughs> Like you being real, you being real safe right now, Cole. Like, and and the other thing is, is that I know this will probably be controversial. I'm willing to suffer the consequences of whatever anybody has to say in the in the in the comment section. Because if you go on on the Bill podcast, y'all know the mantra, right? I I will back up my my opinion with with facts. Mm. And I got hands in real life. <laughs> Say, man. Hey, man. Say, man. Look out, man. Like, I got hands in real life. But one of the things that, like, I be, I be on cold case about is, I, like he said on the... Um, the latest, uh, the the latest freestyle that he did with Sour Milk, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And just incredible. I seen, I seen it. I'm the hardest shit out the South since whatever the fuck. I'm like, Cole, no, nigga, you from the South, sure, mm-hmm. but you have you have self proclaimed and proven time and time again, I'm a Southern nigga with a New York mind. So to me, bro, that voids you. Mm-hmm. You can't possibly speak to my experience. Number one, because your experience, a lot of a lot of what we hear in your music is the tragic mulatto experience. How is me as a black man from from Texas going to be able to relate to that for real? Mm. I don't struggle with that. I don't struggle with the double identity. I don't I don't. That's not the normal black man's experience in the South. The man that speaks to for for me. Is Justin Scott. Mm hmm. A.K.A. You put me on him because those 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 introspective thought, like I love K dot, but I don't live the West Coast lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Racism in the West Coast takes on a different a different look. Your relationship with a woman on the West Coast takes a different, but crit though. That's it don't get no more southern than Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. The 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 experience of of being down in the third coast and being unseen and unheard. Yeah. I hear that in his music and I love it. Or 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 that experience of of I I, I need you to see me as more than this or that. Right. You know, y'all making y'all making the mistake of oh my knee boys just southern country bumpkin bammers, you know what I'm saying? They talk so slow and they they you know they can't possibly be refined human beings, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then here we are and the South is running hip hop. Right. No argument. You know what I'm saying? No argument. Like y'all y'all please please forgive so the, the the noise in the background. Yeah, that's what I love. I love coming to Creator's crib. <laughs> that's you know, that's that's, that's my studios here, man. We uh yeah, that's the, y'all in the trap. You yeah. feel me? The bill <laughs> the <laughs> the bill studio south. That's my that's my lovely lady coming through the door. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, man. Uh, yeah, like I but I don't know, bro. I, I I appreciate Cole though. I really do. Right. But I feel like. I'm gonna I'm read this to you. You you tell me you tell me if if, if you can you can agree you can agree. So I'm in the, I'm in the group chat. Shout out to my boy Cobb DJ Cobb Alexander, my boy Mackie. You know what I'm saying Kyle Mackie of um, the Motion series. Um, I really want to chop it up with you about that too. Okay. Um, but yeah. So here's what I put. 11:01 p.m. last night. Right. I, I may need to take another listen, but my initial thoughts of the off season are that it's anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool, but I feel like Cole is staying in his safe bag. Right. Uh, somebody said I feel the exact same way. It's solid, 
but the album is hella safe. Mm. Yours truly, DJ Cobb Alexander, says it sounds dated to me. Mm. It's like he's competing with Forest Hill Drive. Mm. Mm. And I'm like, hmm. Like, Cole is showing a lot of maturity in this project. Right. You can tell, you know what I'm saying? I think um most men change for the for the better when they have children. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or they begin to like look at the world differently when there's the possibility of it. Of it. So I can see that change in him, you know what I'm saying, lyrically. Um but I'm also like for some certain lyrics, and I'm like I said, I'm gonna need to take another listen so I can be very specific, but there's certain lyrics, it's like, Cole, you talking with like with a chip on your shoulder, like as if people are ignoring you and it's like, nah, Cole, that's not Well it is I think it is because people say the same thing about Cole. His production is bad. He's boring. He can go to sleep. Yada yada. yada. He puts you to sleep, and that could kind of put a chip on your shoulder. Look, man. For me, as a musician, production is very important. Right. Like production is is incredibly important. However, even, you know, born in '87, you know, I'm still very much so into lyricism. So for, lyrically. Like Cole is top tier. Yeah, like for me, it's lyricism. Like I lyrically, lyrics. lyrically, he is he's top tier. Right. But what like it's everything that goes that's surrounding it that I just can't. Mm. And then and then as also that tragic mulatto shit, bro. Mm. Like I I can't, I don't I'm not discrediting your experience I can't but I also can't relate to that mm. like I don't I don't know what that's like mm. because you you know you can choose to tomorrow to pass and everything is passing how what you mean come like on say, y'all like say, like say I'm a white man you can, you you choose to express, you know what I'm saying, your blackness through, you know what I'm saying, your music, how you dress, how you got your hair, different things like that. But you can always clean yourself up and. I, I, yeah, okay. Hit the, hit the, swi- hit the okay. switch, you know what I'm saying? I thought you were going to say that he chooses to um, declare his blackness by, um, his community service, like going to Ferguson. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, what I'm saying he, he, he. That, but that's that's that. That like that's that's his experience. His experience is that like nah, like I'm I'm out there. I'm doing A, B, and C, and yet, like, hey, bro, you what? He 36, 35, yeah, 36, 36, 36. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, but you know this, this you know this part of my 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 you know who I am. Won't accept me because I'm this and this and that. And it's like, all right, bro, like, you're 36. We we know that by now. You know that by now. <laughs> what's next, bro? What's 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 next for sure? Like, what's new, bro? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Uh. Oh, my. Um, you know, um, shout out to Cobb, man. Um, I can't wait to sit. And uh, talk about the build Man It came about I want to save it for him I want to save it uh, Let's go here um, Today is May the 15th 2021 We have 230 days left mm. um, I think back to what you said About um, What people should take from the episode What do you have in mind For the 230 days left in a year? So a couple of things Um, from a, from a business standpoint, I plan on adding 
two more podcasts at the podcast network. And we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about in that build, in a bill. Um uh personally, man, um y'all it's May fifteenth. We are uh halfway through Lupus Awareness Month. Okay. And um out in these 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 last days of this year, I want to get more into um, bringing awareness to the day to day struggles that people with lupus go through. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so that there's a there's someone that can see a face of the person that's trying to get through this just like they are, and and possibly. You know what I'm saying? Give somebody some sort of inspiration to just keep on going because this is a, a disease that like people are starting to hear more and more about, but they don't know anything about it. And they most certainly don't know anything about how it affects African-Americans. Right. And so that's that's something else that, you know, um, I'm really, you know, focusing on. The, the for the latter part of the year, and um, and then last but not least, because y'all know I'm gonna go there. Ak, my 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 lady, my my love, you know, just growing with her, and you know, building a relationship that's that's gonna make us a power couple, right? And yeah. that's it. What about you, bro? Um, now that the softball season is officially over. Mm-hmm. We just have athletics, you know. If girls want to hit around after school, we're cool. I wanna want to get into this real estate bag. Yes, sir. I was thinking the other day, man. <clears throat> you know, I want a Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Roly, Pla- you want you want you want buzz down or, or, or plain Jane? Uh, I don't know yet, man. I'm still researching them. Um, but I want I want to drive a G wagon. Okay. Okay. You know, I want to buy expensive shoes. Buy some expensive shoes for my wife. You know what I'm saying? So, I want more. Yeah. I want more. Yeah, for sure. And, for sure. Uh, you know. Fuck with that. I think that <laughs> the biggest thing for me was that I didn't know where it was coming from. So, I thought that the money at school was kind of like suffice. Right. Until I passed. And I was like, okay, now you can let go of some things. Mm. Mm-hmm. Bigger money to come. And then I eventually want to, 230 days, I want to get a better visual setup for the podcast. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to make it like, ooh, I'm watching TV. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. You know, and so um, that money got to come from somewhere. For sure. You know. I agree. You know, uh, you know, we, we about an hour in, but I, I got to ask you this, man. Um, speech and debate. Mm-hmm. Brother Mike Fain yes, sir. Uh, introduced you to theater. Mm-hmm. Now we're looking at the production side of things, film, right. recording things, chopping them up and editing. Your infatuation for that. <laughs> <laughs> man, I be geeking out, dog. Like, yeah. man, I, I love it. Mm. I really love it. Yeah. Do you One love of the, the aspect of doing it or seeing yourself do it on both ends? I like both ends. Yeah. I, you know, as you were setting up, you don't even understand. Like, I I wanted you to just talk. I didn't want to say shit. Right. I ain't want, like, I just want, I just wanted you to talk and I was watching what you were doing right. and how you were setting up. And I'm asking myself, like, man, okay, so why is he setting it up like that? Oh, okay, cool. Like, all right, so this angle, all right, so then my key light would come from, like, I'm literally, like, right. talking through, mm-hmm. like, if I'm producing this for someone else or I'm producing this for, for the build or for my lady and what she does, like, if it's a three-camera setup, all right, how do you, how do you light it, Chris? Right. Right. Um, 
how do how do you make it look cinematic um with the product placement like all right do you get the products in in the two 45 degree angles or do you simply make sure that it's camera a right right like and and then you know all right cool you got the three camera set up once you put this mug in pro in, in premiere pro and you know like what do i remember from the the training and the tutorials about how to nest it in in the editing process right. you know uh this this audio is it sounds great right like what what like just that the whole the wholeness of the process from setup and takedown to the editing floor like I love it. I said to myself, um, well, my man, um, shout out to Coach Wayne Wheeler, the second who gave me my softball job. We were talking one year, a couple years ago, and uh, I was telling him about the podcast. And, you know, he was helping me come up with a tagline. Of course, I like to say that this is a creative story. But at the end, I like to say that I do what I do for myself to prove that I could do it for others. And he helped me kind of pin that down. Ooh. And bars. And how it is is that I got to remember I'm an actor. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That you are. Irregardless of, irregardless, I became an actor. I was always a performer. But irregardless of what I'm doing, I'm an actor. Mm -hmm. And when I walk from, let's say I'm walking from, the my classroom downstairs even if i'm in a, a hurried pace i'm always cognizant of where the camera would be mm. mm -hmm. if i'm if i'm you know if i'm if i'm if i'm because i've written something before where i was inside a school and when the school's empty i would pick up my pace i would run a little bit to see what the camera would do and what kind of equipment i would need to capture that the emotions from my face and how my body's moving to be able to get to this next point in the in whatever I'm doing. And so I like to always make sure that one, I got my best angle. Yeah, for sure. To anybody who gets the footage can put it together. Right. Because you have enough. Yeah. And three, you can see my whole body and then you can get close up to my face. Right, right. Just in case, you know, I get a little teary out and I can get this Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> you know for sure get the gory tear right yeah yeah for <laughs> sure that 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 man on fire tear that yeah tear. for sure um and so for me it, it comes back to as an actor where's the camera because my man told me always find the lens mm. where's the camera at and you know um am i am i am i all the way in it you know what i mean that was one of my the first the first full full length feature independent film I did I was so worried about what I looked like because I want the best representation like you know sure. when you look at yourself in the mirror you see you know you see you see you see divinity in you, you right right for sure but that's not that might not be what people see when they see you right they might look at you and say oh damn his nose is kind of big yeah yeah for or, sure oh, damn his head is kind of big or damn he got small this he's got small this this features this and i want to make sure that my best features absolutely are seen i agree when i'm recorded and when i'm put out there you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so for me as an actor it always comes back to do i look good at this angle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do i look good at this angle and then you know I mean that's just that's just what it boils down to for me. I and mean, see, for, and see, as a producer, it's my job to make sure that if that is if that's what my subject is worried about, my challenge is to make sure that when they look at the playback, they're like, "Holy shit!" Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's what we're worried about. Yeah, as an actor, and then and then as a storyteller, when I'm in editing. I want to make sure that one, you get the subject who's talking, but then you also get the reaction of the subject who's listening. For sure. I, yeah, I really like that, which is why I applaud your bravery for doing multiple angles. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we're trying to work to, 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 to get to that point as well. Um, Shout out to my man, Jonathan St. Mary. 
You know what I'm saying? Because of because and because one of the first things that was told to me that really made me get down into the challenge of this is somebody was like, man, you know, you and Cobb, y'all some, you know, y'all some chocolate brothers. Right. If y'all can get the lighting down for the two of you in a video together, you can do this shit for anybody. Right. And if you can do this for y'all and, and you can do it for anybody, you can make money right. doing this anytime. Right. And that was the very first thing. Like before the editing and, and all of the other extra stuff, my main focus for at least 90 days, every single day, JR bro was, how do I do better at lighting? What do right. I need? What do I need for lighting? Right. Aperture light. What What is the aperture light? Well, the aperture is the same as the thing as your camera. Okay, so then what is how does how is aperture controlled in the camera? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? What's the difference between natural light and in and, and ISO? Mm-hmm. Like, what are all these terms that I'm that I'm hearing? Right. You know what I'm saying? And and then once we got that down with the talk that talk series, it's like all right, cool. Now how do we do that and film like? and tell stories and, and get those things down. And then we got the opportunity to record uh, or to, to film a, a web series and, you know, do, we did that last year and, you know, two dudes, you know what I'm saying? A two man crew, literally. Right. And we got it done. Right. You know what I'm saying? Five episodes, and you know, um, the the EP ended up you know, kind of dead in it because <laughs> they were cheap. Right. But we did it, and it looked great. Right. You know, and like that, like seeing that growth. Right. Like I I can't wait until you know one day soon, some you know the pandemic is over. People are back in the AMC theaters and and doing that, doing all those things, and you see pop up on the screen, the you know, the Bill Studios. That's what we live for. As the production team, no doubt. That's what we live for. You no, know I'm saying like, yeah. yeah, executive producer Christopher Hunter, right, or associate producer, right, Christopher, Hunter, like, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. director, uh, Cobb, you know, Alexander Cobb, like. I can't wait for that. Right. You know, because the stories that we want to tell, you know, the things that the, the things that we want to dive into um from docu series to documentaries to skits to, you know, whatever, like I just I'm ready. Right. Right. And I'm ready for it, man. Most importantly, man, the last question I'll ask is, what's next? What's next? So we're about to do this HBCU series, man. Because, as with a lot of stuff, um, we predicted this wave. We predicted this wave. From athletics to the, the increased enrollment on just in academia of black children deciding to go back to HBCU. So that's what's next for me. Um, I've got that. I've got some more talk that talks um, in the, in the chamber. Um, that's, that's about to be, you know, controversial, but <laughs> that's what we're known for, bro. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what we're known for. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then y'all be on the lookout there's this there's a series um that two two series that we're doing um one is um dedicated solely to the the study of black women in the um the justice system and just how much of a large percentage of the of the prison system is filled with african american women Mm. And then the second thing 
is the builder civics. Um, you know, the participation of black people in the political process is important, but you got a bunch of whack ass uppity ass Negroes explaining the importance, but you're not talking the same language of the, of the cat from, from Coke apartments in fifth ward. Yeah. You're not explaining it to where somebody in the CUNY homes will get it. You feel me? Right. And that's where the bill comes in. So that's what's next, man. I can't wait to bring you and Cobb together so we can talk about that, man. Because that, you know, my my peoples who do podcasts are my top podcasts. I love to see. I love to see the platform that we're trying to make for ourselves. For sure. Because um, the essence of the podcast is, man, listen, we got to find out how it is that we got creative juices, too. For sure. And sometimes, like you said about crit and being from the South, we get underlooked. We get overlooked. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I mean, it's a lot of podcasts in the city, but if we're not talking about screw. For sure. If we're not, you know, driving slabs, you know, we're talking about two black men. Graduated from the University of Houston. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we we would like an opportunity to showcase our trade talent in the city. For sure. And in the nation. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like I like I like to say on this podcast, man, um, in 2019, I gave away this exclusive black SVI T-shirt. Yee-hoo. That I give to every creative that comes on the podcast. Man. In 2020, I added the black exclusive these. What's Next podcast t-shirt yes, sir. that I give to every creative on the podcast. Um, it's just a token Man, of appreciation. I appreciate it. Because um, yeah, here's what y'all, you know, y'all, y'all got to know. If you ever watched anything here in the trap, we got the, we got the infamous, you know, wall with the caps. We're changing that up. And as we collab with, with, People that we fuck with tough. If they got merch, it's going on the wall. Mm. So, um, which one would you want to see on the wall, bro? What's next or still visionary? Um, still visionary on there because my vision. wife tells me that I need to put the podcast word on the what's next so people know it's a podcast. Ah. Got gotcha. so um, but <laughs> hey, but man. that black one, man, I love to see it on when when people wear that black one. I know that they were part of the one thirteen, for sure. For and sure. I'm, and we're gonna switch them out, and I'm gonna get you the right sizes. Yeah, but um, uh, but yeah, man, um, I just appreciate it. You saying, yo, you know what? I'm open all Saturday. It it eliminated all the excuses for me. Yeah. Because if you would have been like, ah, today's not good, then I know I would have been like, all right, well, ah. <laughs> but I said, when you said it's all good, I said, nah, I'm going, I, the passion in me, I got to get another episode out. I got to. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So uh, I appreciate that too, man. Um, Listen, Houston, Texas, I'm here with my man, CJ Hunter. Rest in peace to brother Mike Fane. Rest in peace to Miss Penny. I sure. Shout out to Houston, University of Houston, Cougars. Hey, whose house, y'all? You already know. Uh, I do what I do for myself to prove that I could do it for others. My wife, I love you. AK, what's up? AK, yeah. that's her name? Yeah, AK. AK, what's up, baby? I love you. Peace and blessings. Yo, I feel like I'm Big Over and over, over, over.